But this video is doing a bit of tidying up of a few things that are normally done in the compilers and you've probably done in the lab and the SS coursework and it's actually shown in all of the notes, examples um, that you've done before. So one of the things I didn't include in my little sample compiler for this Pascal light language is I haven't been stripping out the white space and you'll see from this tree print that we did in the last video there's some blank lines at the top on the bottom and that's an indicator that we haven't done that so I can go to the .l file and I can declare a delimiter like there is in all the examples as a set of characters contained in the space and a carriage return and a new line and uh, a tab and there are various other white space characters that one could do and then I could declare the white space pattern to be zero or delimiters and then I could add here that whenever we see some white space we could skip the space. In other words, do nothing. So that's easy to do. While I'm actually here in the lecture, there's a couple of other things um, that are not quite right. So here I've declared the symbol table, but I've declared the symbol table both when I'm printing and not printing tokens and actually that's not correct I need to only declare the symbol table when I'm returning tokens so it's only necessary for the compiler part and similarly all the routines for there I'll need in doing so I've done if endf if not defined Print. If we're not printing, then we can do the symbol table. So I've improved the Lexa. There. There's actually one more thing I can do on the Lexa. Is I can actually put something on the bottom here to match anything. So if I put a dot, which is the universal character, I can actually have an error message. An expected symbol in analyzer. So if it's not one of the ones in my language, I can actually print out an error and uh, see that error it would also be useful to know what that symbol is so perhaps I should print that symbol actually that symbol might not be printable so perhaps I need to print its value <coughs> so that's a bit of extra on the lexical analyzer to make it work a lot better. So let me just run that through flex. And now I can just build um, my lexer on its own. and the minus D get the printing version and I'm going to get lots of 
errors, so I'll quickly check on that. of what can happen if you do that. So now I can call the lecture just to test it. And if I type in an identity it finds an identifier. If I type in a number it finds a number and various other symbols. But if I type in a symbol it doesn't know, like the hash, I get unexpected symbol. And if I type in some kind of control character it doesn't know, like control K, it tells me unexpected symbol control K. So then control Z ends the file. So now I know that anything that's not matched by the rules won't slip through. So I've made my lexical analyzer a bit more robust. There's some similar things that I can do with the parser that I've made just to tidy it up a little bit because actually this code here that I've done to print things out um, isn't controlled by the flag so in the specifications uh, for the coursework the print tree should only be printed out if the debug flag was set. So when I, I need to protect that code by an if def. And I can do a similar thing here. And I can do a similar thing So that code is now only included if we're doing debugging and we want to print the symbol table. Let's just expand that. So <coughs> the other thing I can do to improve that actually here I've checked if item is nothing. Um, that doesn't make actually any that's not correct because if it's a number value, an ID value, I know it's not nothing. So I actually need to do that test a bit later. So really what I should be doing is let's get the indentation right. <coughs> if it's a number value, print out the number. If it's an identifier, try to print out the identifier. look to see whether the identifier is in range. If it's not in range it's unknown. But now what if it's not equal to ID value? So for any other one now we test if it's nothing not equal to nothing and now we can print F the item value as an integer that's a much more robust piece of code for printing the tree. The other thing I said we could add to it is perhaps a bit of indentation. Well the way we can do that is we can add an extra integer indentation to there and when we recurse 
we could indent a bit more. Then what we can do, we need to just output the correct number of spaces before we do something. So I've just done a little loop that prints out the right number of spaces uh, based on indent using a little count variable i. Then what I've got to do is go back to the, where we started printing the tree and we start with no indention, indentation and we have to remember to change the template that it has an integer. So we should have a better looking tree now. So now we can call bison on pascal like dot y and hopefully that should be okay. And now we should call GCC on the resulting thing which we now could call our parser. And we compile Pascal like dot tab dot c and our main program Pascal like dot c and we minus define debug to get the printout and the lf out. Now with a bit of luck, I haven't made any typos and. Uh, that should do that. And now I can try the parser input from my test program, which I should have here. Oops, that's run off the screen. Debug that. I've put my loop the wrong way round, so my loop will never finish and it'll print spaces forever. That's a typical kind of mistake you can make. I can run through Bison. So I just thought I'd show you a bit of debugging. To you think like a programmer. Run it through test. Oh, that's because I didn't do the mindless debug. That one. a brief pause while I debug that one, but you get the idea.